Is the Tuttlecasting system good for writing? I am conflicted, and you folks have been asking me for a video explaining how I use Obsidian and my Tuttlecasting to write an article or a book or write anything, and it's coming, I swear. But first, I wanted to like air out some issues that I've been having with trying to turn my knowledge within my knowledge management system of the Tettlecasting in Obsidian. I've been having issues trying to turn that stuff into linear texts. So I wanted to have a chit chat about the problems that I've been having turning my notes and knowledge into say academic articles or even my dissertation. And I've tried to really understand what these issues are and why this has been so difficult for me. Because personally, my ultimate goal with the Tettlecast and system is to produce written content. Very quickly, if you are unfamiliar, Tettlecast and literally translates to slip box. And that's because this is a knowledge management system system and a note-taking system that was originally developed on little slip cards, little note cards, cue cards I call them, and they would be placed in little boxes in a cabinet and each of these little note cards would have metadata on it so it would have a unique identifier that locates it within the box and there might be an index of cards so you know where to find everything and the order the notes were in had some kind of relevant order but ultimately all these notes were interconnected because every time you stuck a note in side of your slip box, you would put the unique identifiers of other notes on that note that it was relevant to. So anywhere you went in your slip box, you could connect across the entire slip box. And Nicholas Luhmann, the sociologist that this system has been attributed to, he used the system to write tons of texts. And I am very hopeful that I will be able to use my Tettlecast in, in exactly the same way, to write tons of texts to become a prolific writer. That's my goal. But to become a prolific writer, you need a method of taking down the knowledge that you are intaking. And then you need a method of organizing that knowledge for easy access so that when you actually go to write something, you know where that knowledge is and you know where you got that knowledge from. And so in my opinion, the Tettlecasting is the absolute best way I have ever seen to organize knowledge so that that knowledge is usable and that that knowledge can aid you to build new knowledge. And that building of new knowledge is like particularly relevant to me as a PhD candidate because my main goal as a PhD candidate is to produce an original contribution to knowledge. And the way that I do that is by connecting across various fields and nuggets of knowledge. Some of that knowledge comes from the interviews that I did. Some of that knowledge comes from the books that I've read. Some of that knowledge comes from my own experience. And I need to capture all of that information so that I can see it in one place and see where all of that stuff interconnects. My research contribution will be a synthesis of all of those locations of knowledge. And when I connect them all together in a way that they've never been connected before, that's what I'm contributing in part. And I am so much better at that with the Tettlecasting because I can only hold so much in my brain at one time. For instance, earlier this week, I was trying to connect the ideas of the juggling community as we call it, with the idea of community theater, which I was a part of growing up. On the community theater side of things, I had like three different scholars who discussed amateur theater and community theater and little theaters in Canada. And then on the juggling side of things, I had the interviews that I had conducted and I had a couple uh, quotes from podcasts and various other places where people talk about juggling and my own experiences. And the way that I ended up developing my argument was through a synthesis of all of that information. But it's really hard for me to hold all six sources in my head at one time and then also extrapolate from there. So the Tettlecasting has been invaluable in that respect. I don't even remember how I came up with ideas before I had the Tettlecasting. It is that important to my process now. However, Coming up with the ideas is only the first part of doing a dissertation. The other part is writing them down so that you can actually transmit that knowledge that you are producing. And this is where I've come up against some issues in my Tettlecast and system. And ultimately right now I am writing my physical dissertation in Microsoft Word, not in Obsidian, because I haven't found like a really good way to do that in Obsidian, but that's not the main issue. The main issues are threefold. First of all, I write notes in a different style of writing than I write papers. What's more, I write in a different style 
depending on the paper that I'm writing. I will write in the tone of voice that is required for that paper. And so I can't literally copy and paste notes from my Zettelkasten into my papers, nor would I want to because I don't want to risk plagiarizing myself as I continue writing into the future. But personally, once I have written about something, I find it very difficult for me to write about that thing in a different style or a different tone of voice or focusing on slightly different things because something is already there. In other words, sometimes I find it easier to write something starting from nothing than starting from something. I have this issue when I try to get ChatGPT to help me write things as well. So maybe ChatGPT isn't as useful as everyone says it's going to be. <laughs> so that's issue number one is just style and tone of voice and actual like the practice of making sentences becomes more difficult when sentences already exist. The second issue that I have is that writing for me is also a process of discovery. So even if I have a bunch of notes and I already have an outline of exactly what I'm writing that I have constructed from the existing notes in my Zettelkasten, even if that's the case, as I'm writing, I will discover new things to say. Like I am very much what they call in the fiction writing world a discovery writer or a pantser in many respects. I really enjoy the process of writing and so when I'm writing I find things out about what I am writing. Sometimes I'll literally make new knowledge in the process of writing. And so in that moment sometimes I derail the outline I've created in Obsidian. Plus, I have now new pieces of information that I want to capture in my Zettelkasten as I am in the writing process. So do I stop writing and put those notes into Zettelkasten and then into my outline for my written project? Or do I keep writing and risk not capturing that in the larger Obsidian project? But also potentially derailing the entire outline I had created within Obsidian and we'll get to outlines in Obsidian in a second. And the third and final problem, which is the reason I wanted to discuss this in general, is the issue of linearity, which I saw, I think, Christian in the Zettelkasten forum discuss as hierarchical versus non-hierarchical thought. And in Obsidian, thought is non-hierarchical. There's no like correct order to put thoughts in because you're supposed to capture information on these little note cards and so it has to be a complete thought, and it has to be a small complete thought. It's supposed to be an atomic unit of knowledge. So all of the notes in my Zettelkasten in Obsidian are totally complete within themselves and non-hierarchical, like you could read this thought and understand this thought without accessing other thoughts. Yes, other thoughts within my Zettelkasten will um, help contextualize this thought for sure, but this thought will also help you contextualize those other thoughts. So which comes first? Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know! And ever since adopting Zettelkasten, specifically within Obsidian, that literally makes it look like this graph with a bunch of nodes and interconnections, so that nothing really looks like it's coming before or after anything else, since making my brain work in that way, it has stopped working in the linear way of argument, point, 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 argument that supplements the first argument, point, point, point. This linear way that we are taught to write essays in school. And I can hear many people in my own life who would say, well, we should write differently. We should experiment with different forms of writing. In fact, Nicole Vanderhoeven is about to start a book project in Obsidian and was discussing this idea of potentially writing the book in a different format. I don't know if that would be non-linearly in her case. If the book is only going to exist on the internet, why couldn't you just have links throughout the text so that you could jump around? Around, or write it like a choose your own adventure novel so that it doesn't have to all come after one another. You can choose your own way through the argument so that every piece of the argument is somewhat complete in itself. However, personally, I do really like linear writing. I really like being carried through a text by an author and I really like writing that way myself. And so it has been very frustrating for me to not understand which order I should put my thoughts in in a piece of writing anymore. I apologize because this video is going to be more me identifying problems than it is me giving you solutions, which I do like to do. And I look forward to hopefully seeing all of your solutions to my problems in the comment section below. But I do want to 
offer some ways in to using Obsidian as a writing tool, not just a research tool, and maybe point towards some of the ways that I'm going to change how I approach writing now that I'm using Settlecaston. Because as much as I'm conflicted about Settlecaston as a writing tool, I am not conflicted about it as a knowledge management tool, and also as a research tool, a way to find new thought and create new ideas. And clearly for me, the creation of new ideas and the writing down of those ideas really go hand in hand and sometimes change places. Sometimes it's the writing that gives me the ideas and sometimes it's the ideas that give me the writing. So how would you write something with Obsidian in an easy way that is linear and hierarchical? Typically the way that's gonna go is like this. First you make an outline of your paper. It can be a loose outline. It's probably going to develop as you fill it with ideas. And those ideas are going to come from your Settlecaston. And so at first you're just going to take the links for the notes where those ideas are stored and you're going to slot those links into the outline. And to make this hierarchical, you might have groupings of notes. So you'll have like the parent note and then it's little children notes after it in the appropriate order for how they should be contextualizing each other. And then you can always move that grouping of just links around in your outline. So as you're playing around with the outline, you can still move things around because it's not a bunch of text yet. You've just got like the nodes of ideas. And this is why I name all of my notes after the core thesis of each thought, because now my outline essentially looks like all of the topic sentences of the essay that I'm going to write. So once you've got your outline and you've got all of your links in there, then you're going to paste the actual content from the links into your essay outline. So now you've got the zero draft or the shitty first draft or whatever you want to call it of your article or book chapter or what have you. There's no transition sentences yet because each of these notes that you've pasted in is like atomic. It's complete in itself so it, it's not transitioning between anything. It might not make a whole lot of sense but you've got something. You've got a shitty draft. Now, presumably, all you have to do is write some transitional statements, write an introduction that summarizes everything you've got in there, you know, tweak some of the sentences so that they sound like they're in your writing voice, and voila, you have the first draft of a paper that you can send out to people to look at as well. So that's the general idea. Obviously, you can already imagine where all of my problems come when it comes to this system. First of all, in the outline, how do I decide what should go before what in my arguments? Because it really feels like every single piece of knowledge needs to happen first, because in my brain, I'm, I'm experiencing them all at once, and I can't imagine giving any one of them to a person before they understand all the others. But I can't give them all of the pieces of information in my head all at once. So I have to find a way to create an order. And the best situation that I've found for this so far is simply to make a choice. And even if it looks like it doesn't make any sense at first, make a decision about the linear order that these ideas are going to come. And even if you're like, well, that first idea, it would actually be really good if they already knew the third idea before they knew that first idea. Don't worry so much about that. Just make a decision and start writing and the issues with the order you've chosen will come up in the writing process and you'll be able to move things around later. It's not an ideal solution, but it's the one I have right now. Secondly, the issue that I have around notes not being in the tone of voice that I want for this article and also already having text there being an issue for me rewording it because I can't think of another way that it could be said. My current solution for this is to finish that zero draft that is just copy and pasting notes and then to completely rewrite it. So not even to live in that draft, to push it off to the side and sometimes even close it entirely. And now that I have a sort of like understanding of how the paper might go, I write a blank, like from a blank page, I start writing a new draft and hopefully it mirrors the other draft but at least now that I have that other draft in my head, I know an order of how it might go and I can imagine this entire paper, I start writing from scratch. And that way I can just let the style of the writing and the voice of the writing come out in my discovery writing. Even though I've really already discovered everything I'm going to write about, it still gives me that opportunity to sort of start fresh. And then finally, the issue where I am a discovery writer and sometimes I will discover new notes that aren't in my Settlecaston as I am writing this paper from the notes that were in my Settlecaston. In 2014, Sasha on the Settlecaston forum made a post where he differentiated between directional and indirectional notes. And like Sasha, most of my notes are indirectional. 
meaning I didn't write them for any purpose except to store that knowledge. So they were note-taking for note-taking's sake. Directional notes, on the other hand, are ones that you make for a project like a book chapter, say, and you're doing research for this book chapter, so you are creating notes that are relevant to that research. And Sasha says that either way, he has a folder in his Settlecaston, which he calls Themes and Outlines, where he will store all of the outlines for potential future texts that he is going to write. Sometimes, when he's doing directional note-taking, he will put those notes directly into the outline where they belong. And I think that's great, and I do something very similar. The really cool part is how he uses the indirectional notes, and every time he puts a note into his entire system, he will examine his outlines folder to see if there's anywhere in any of his outlines that this note could belong, and he'll put it there. So now all of those outlines of potential future writing projects are literally filling themselves up over time. And I love that idea, and I am going to start employing that idea. I only just found out about it when I was preparing to have this little chat with you, so I'll let you know in the future how that goes, but I really like the idea of texts writing themselves. Of course, what writer wouldn't? I think that is everything that I wanted to say in this video. If you are having problems with writing and your Tettelkasten, and I haven't addressed those in this video, then please let me know in the comments section below because maybe I'm having those problems too and I just didn't realize it, or maybe other people are, or maybe other people have had a solution to those problems and they can help you out. I have found a lot of solutions to my problems from this community here on my YouTube channel, so I really appreciate it when you write things in the comments. Like in my previous video, somebody gave me a keyboard shortcut and I've been using it every day. So thank you so much for watching, everybody video about me writing an article using Obsidian coming soon. In the meantime, you should totally watch Nicole Vanderhoeven's video on how she is going to start a book writing project and document that on YouTube because I am so excited for that project. It's so valuable when we see other people do their work as they're doing it and see them struggle through these problems, which is also why I wanted to tell you about my struggles with writing using my Tuttlecaston here today. So thank you for creating such a supportive community. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. Haven't mentioned that. And I'll see you in another video soon. Bye everybody.